Thank you, Asylo. That was that was lovely. Our first presentation uh, is about the history of the Bar Association. Uh, as we've mentioned, 40 years is a long time uh, for a Bar Association on this territory, and a lot's happened over that time. Roy Hall uh, has been a fixture of the American Samoa legal field for many years. He was admitted into the American Samoa Bar in 1974 and has since served in a large number of positions. Everything from producer at KVZK uh, to a representative in the House of the Phono. Roy has been extremely active in the community. He's been a member of the Territorial Planning Commission, chairman of the Alcohol Beverage Control Board, chairman of the Judiciary Committee in the House. He's been a past president of the Chamber of Commerce, the Rotary Club, and vice president of the Shriners. In 1989, he was appointed district court judge pro, uh, pro temp. Perhaps most importantly, uh, he's a multiple term past president of the American Samoa Bar Association, um, and he probably knows this association better than anyone else. Uh, Roy, here you come on up. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm sure most of you know me, and uh, except maybe some of the uh, college students here. Um, as Sean was saying, I've, uh, I've pretty much been a member of the American Small Bar Association for 38 years, so uh, the 40th anniversary, I guess, would fall on my shoulders as being the uh, most senior member uh, still standing. <laughs> In the American Small Bar Association, um, it's, uh, I'm uh, a little nervous because I'm starting after a, a, self, a pastor, a self Winono, because uh, I think if life ha has contrasts, I think that Mr. Osawa and I would be the contrast in our uh, our society, uh, and I have a story to tell about him later. But when I was doing my research. Um, on the history of American Small Bar, uh, I found that the American Small Bar Association was formally incorporated into the law under uh, ASCA section 31.0110, wherein um, there is created the American Small Bar Association. The purposes of the Bar Association shall be to improve the administration of justice, all persons admitted to the practice of law, on a regular basis before any division of the High Court of American Samoa shall be members of the Bar Association. Now, the American Bar Association was established, uh, from what I've researched, was in 1972 uh, by A.P. Lutali, who was a legal practitioner at the time. He later served as a Samoan judge. He was a senator and a past governor of American Samoa. The other person, uh, member was uh, Peter Tolly Coleman. He was the first American Samoan attorney. Um, I was the second. Uh, he was, um, uh, Coleman was a captain in the United States Army during, during World War II. He also served for many years as the High Commissioner for the Trust Territories. And later, of course, he served, uh, I believe, four terms. Uh, one, uh, one as the appointed governor, and three as an elected governor. So these two gentlemen uh, were the founding fathers of our bar associations. As for me, my experience with the American Small Bar Association was when I returned to American Small in 1974 after prior passing the bar exam in Hawaii. Two years. Uh, before that, uh, the Bar Association was founded. And I was trying to wonder, after I spoke to Sean, how can I show the, the history of the American Small Bar Association? Well, I thought I would get a photo of the court, the courthouse in 1972, and then show a photo of the courthouse today. <laughs> the only problem was that the uh, courthouse, as you see, hasn't really changed. So then I decided that the best way to show, approximately 40 years ago, uh, what the Bar Association may have looked like in those days was, uh, one of the other things I 
when I was getting ready to do my presentation, uh, I was asked what uh, technical equipment I needed. And uh, I was asked if I was going to be doing a PowerPoint presentation. And I asked for an overhead projector. So, and it was not available. So what, I, what I've done is I've come up with a photo that I believe uh, will show what 40 years ago was like. This is my assistant. <laughs> uh, that's what it looked like almost 40 years ago. And standing before you now is what it looks like now. <laughs> I have others I could autograph for those that are <laughs> 50 years and older. I also uh, thought that maybe I would look at uh, the list of justices that we've had here at the High Court over the past 40 years. And this is what I came up with. Donald Crothers, Leslie Jacobson, William McKnight, William O'Connor, Richard Miyamoto, Thomas Murphy, Robert Gardner, Grover Joseph Rees III, and then, in 1987, Michael Cruze was uh, appointed Associate Justice, and in 1988, he was appointed Chief Justice. And then, in 1991, Lyle Richmond was appointed Associate Justice. So that's the history of the uh, court members. Uh, in 1974, the American Small Bar Association was what we called an integrated bar. And um, we had, as, as its members, legal practitioners. These were Simone High Chiefs that represented clients uh, before the Land and Matai Titles Division of the High Court, and the licensed attorneys. In the uh, 70s and 80s, the Bar Association was very active. Meetings were well attended by both the legal practitioners and the attorneys. The uh, uh, best known legal practitioners were also the traditional leaders. And these were, for example, High Chief Tuya, High Chief Lolo Lutali, the founding member, High Chief Salanoa, High Chief Fufo Sunia, High Chief Tuisopo, uh, Chief Apelu Ngaliai, who later became High Chief. Uh, Senator Faivai Meliai, High Chief Tano, and High Chief Mangeo. If uh, members uh, should look at the uh, ASR reports, that's the first reports, you will see these titles uh, uh, in, in many of the land and uh, title cases. And some of these, their fathers uh, were legal practitioners. And they, uh, when they took the title, they continued that tradition. Well, in 1974, there were, uh, there were four lawyers. George Ray, Pelly Evey, Frank Sweat, and myself. But between 1975 and 1980, um, we started to get uh, uh, more lawyers. Uh, Lau Richmond entered, Moinga Lutu, uh, who's now a four, Herman Cruze, Michael Cruze, Aitufeli Sunia, John Ward, Tawidi Tune, Edgar Aviata, Fano Asawa Fuimono, Tongiola Tulafono, our present governor, and later was Arthur Ripley, Charles Alagima, Steve Watson, William Reardon, Barry Rose, Jennifer Johnson, Henry Cappell, Marshall Ashley, Marie Alagima, uh, Sharon Rancourt, Tala Wiangale, David Vargas, and Robert. But these are as you can see, we, the bar has grown in members. But, and during those years, I, I can say that, uh, and uh, for Asawa, uh, for some of us, legal business was booming. And uh, the legal pr uh, profession of American Small started to slow down, I, I, you know, after, about after the year 2000. And, and this was basically because the number of uh, lawyers in private practice uh, uh, went down. Many of the uh, 
senior attorneys were now in the judiciary or they were joint banking uh, uh, businesses. Uh, some were serving in the government. Many entered politics and sadly many uh, have passed away. You know, recently a young lawyer uh, asked me if there was an opportunity in the private sector now for young lawyers uh, who, after serving, are uh, doing government service. And, and I said at the time that I didn't think that the legal economics was there. But ever since then, I've been thinking about it. And the more I thought about it, I, I realized there are, there are many opportunities out there for the legal professions and the legal profession in the private practice. And I, I highly recommend and I encourage all lawyers that who may be in government service or who may be working in the United States that wish to come back to American Small. There are opportunities here. You make the opportunities. There's uh, needs in the uh, family law, personal injury, medical malpractice, uh, corporate admiralty, commercial trans transactions, and criminal law. So there are opportunities out there. And I highly encourage uh, uh, young lawyers to, uh, to enter the private uh, profession. Well, we're back, uh, let's go back into history. During the late 1970s and 80s, the American Small Bar Association started to hold law conferences with the Western Small Law Society. And we would select uh, topical legal subjects. Uh, the attorneys would be appointed to prepare papers on these areas of law. And then a panel, much like we're doing today, would, uh, would sit represented by the American Small Bar Association and the Western Small Law Society, and we would discuss and debate the issues of jurisdiction, land and titles matters, immigration law, international law, constitutional law, and also the cross-practice of law in between both jurisdictions. And one year we would all travel to Samoa, another year, the next year they would come here. And then we would end it with social events, a golf tournament and tennis tournament. And I think I mentioned this to Sean, that we, we should start this again. In fact, uh, this will take me to my story with a, for uh, Pastor Asawa. In one of our first conferences, uh, Asawa was with the Western Small Law Society. I believe he was with the Attorney General's office at the time. And he was selected to be one of the speakers. Now, many of us brought legal tabs, some brought some law books, and uh, when it came time for Pastor Osawa to stand up, he walked up and all he had was the Bible. And he raised the Bible to us and he gave us a sermon. And so he was very consistent then and today. In fact, many members of, uh, in those days, in the 70s and 80s, um, of the, our bar association had made appearances. I have uh, made appearances before the Supreme Court of Samoa. I was initially admitted uh, in 74 to practice in, in Samoa. Recently at a law conference I tried to uh, convince the Western Samoa Law Society that I should be grandfathered in and they voted no. And there were lawyers from uh, Samoa that used to come here. And um, I remember Herbert Clark, who has uh, two sons now who are practicing in Samoa. Uh, an old friend, Tupai Seapa, and uh, Reggie Phillips, who later became the first chief Samoan Chief Justice in uh, Samoa. You know, one of the things that when Sean and I were talking about the conference, I talking about the topic of uh, 40 years of promoting justice in American Samoa by members of the bar. And I thought about it, and then I started to think and uh, looked up some, some of the some past cases, which I'll call our landmark cases, and I'd like to share them with you now. One is uh, King versus Morton. This is a case of a newspaper publisher who was prosecuted and convicted for failure to file his tax return. Now I suspect it was also 
his editorials against the appointed governor that may have, may have made him a target of this case, but that's just my personal opinion. A member of the bar, the American Small Bar Association, championed this case, and with the assistance of a law firm in the United States, sued the Secretary of the Interior in Washington, D.C. And the federal court reversed the conviction because Mr. King was a U.S. citizen and he was denied a jury trial. And this is the reason that our courts in American Small have jury trials in criminal cases. And then there's the other case of the F.V. Fijian Swift case where a member of the bar obtained a writ of prohibition from the appellate court barring the trial division from exercising in rem admiralty jurisdiction without statutory enactment from the phono of American Small. Immediately thereafter, the governor convened a special session of the phono and introduced a bill to grant admiralty in rem and in personam jurisdiction to the High Court of American Small. And admiralty cases uh, from American Small have been cited in maritime law journals, and many admiralty lawyers that I work with have told me that they have cited our cases in their admiralty cases. So we've made an impact in admiralty law. Then there's the governor election case. This is where a member of the bar filed a taxpayer's lawsuit against a sitting governor to prevent the election office from using tax dollars to print a ballot with his name on it. And the court agreed that the sitting governor had served two full terms and could not run for, for a third term. Then there's a the case of um, Lee Immigration, Mr. Lee uh, Immigration and Citizenship. Another member of the bar took the challenge of a Chinese citizen who was married to a U.S. citizen living in American Samoa whose application for citizenship was denied. The local bar member sued the Immigration Naturalization Service in San Francisco, uh, San Francisco Federal Court, saying that Mr. Lee was married to a U.S. citizen employed with the government of the United States as an employee of the American small government. Therefore, Mr. Lee met the legal qualifications for citizenship while residing outside the United States. The court agreed, and Mr. Lee was sworn in as a U.S. citizen. Another, um, it's not a case, but it's sort of an event. Um, a member of the bar was appointed a, as chief election officer in the 1980s and he enlisted the American Small Bar Association members to serve as election poll monitors on election day in American Small. You know, and after that experience, I know for myself and all those others that participated in it, that I had the greatest appreciation for the election process at that level and the democratic values seen in each voter as they stood in line from every walk of life waiting to cast their vote. And Sean, this may be something we should do again. These are just a few examples where members of the American Small Bar Association had acted to promote justice in the territory of American Small. <clears throat> but even going back again to when I returned to American Small in 1974, I was, um, I had recently passed the Hawaii bar and I was enlisted by uh, the uh, delegate at large to Washington, D.C., Au Fuimono, to be special legal counsel to a uh, uh, commission to revise uh, the Constitution of American Small. And um, I drafted up a constitution uh, it it uh, included an equal protection clause and a, uh, recommended a smaller unicameral legislature. It was never introduced or acted upon by the conference 
In fact, I was discharged the first day from the legal team that was adv advising the convention, and I walked out of the Fale Laume and into the private practice of law. And also in my tenure as, re as a representative from the 15th district of Tualuta in the 1980s, I introduced a bill to allow permanent residents to vote. And it was killed in the second reading. Every time I reintroduced it, it was killed in the second reading. And um, one of my, my last story here is a, uh, uh, about the American Small Bar Association, was that in 1986, uh, certain members of the, uh, of the bar, after uh, making arguments uh, at, a, at an uh, appellate session, uh, before a, a federal judge whose name was Anthony Kennedy, uh, several members of the bar were the first to congratulate Justice Kennedy on his appointment by Ronald, President Reagan to the United States Supreme Court, and later to celebrate the select members of the American Small Bar Association, introduce Justice uh, Kennedy to Vailima Beer, and uh, he claims it's his favorite. So I hope by speaking today I was able to give you a snapshot of the beginnings of the American Small Bar Association and share some of my personal experiences. But as an attorney, I also believe that there are many issues that our law profession must have open debate on now. And these are the right to vote to all qualified voters in the territory, um, allowing U.S. citizenship by birth or naturalization, extending the United States Immigration and Customs um, jurisdiction to American Samoa to make the territory a port of entry. We need to establish a federal court as part of the Federal Ninth Judicial District, either through our High Court or as part of the Hawaii Federal District Court. And yet we need to balance all of this with how to become an organized and incorporated territory with the United States and preserve the best of our culture and protect communal lands to allow for development and prosperity for the people of American Samoa. There's much uh, more that the American Samoa Bar Association can do to promote justice, equality, and fairness, not just in this community, but in this region. It is a challenge that is always there. We as lawyers must take action that when we see an injustice, make it right. Don't just make it better, make it right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roy. That was, uh, that was, I really enjoyed that. Um, really enjoyed being able to look back and you know, kind of see what we've been doing. Some of those landmark cases I found fascinating. I've, you know, I've heard some of them, um, but some of them were new to me. I didn't realize you know, it was the whole governor third term. Uh, I thought that was pretty, pretty interesting.